So we're done laminating. We're getting ready to cut it out. I'm going to take off my lamination plate, put on my pulling tool, cut it out, and pull the socket out of the cast. So the one thing we did make sure on this was letting it sit overnight so this epoxy resin would bond to the sirloin. And this little guy usually just takes a tap to get him off. Just take my knife to kind of lower that edge a little. My handy dandy puller tool. Kind of a tech tip on this one, I like to put all four in. That way I know that my four hole is in good shape. I've got good clean threads. All four screws will work in and out of it. Okay, so same old deal. You want to make sure you expose as much of that as you can so it pulls out of there easier. I got the face of it real good. I'm going to do right here where the thumb part is so I can open it up a little bit more. We should be able to pop that right out. We've got it unhooked here. All the face of it's open. Being careful not to drop my screws in the trash can. That screw in there nice and snug. And if I've cleaned everything up correctly, that should pop right out. A little tooling plate. Did a nice job how they fabricate that. Yeah, that nylon doesn't look too bad against that sirloin. Not too bad for texture. So, here's what we're looking for is now we've got a seal, a plastic that runs all the way to the edge. You can see in there okay? Right there. We had a perfect seal. And then we did that urethane with our, with our uh, Coyote Quick. We sealed that edge to make sure after we laminate, we're not going to get any air passing around this area right here. That's not bad for flexibility. It's light. Part of it has to do with the shape of this. But all we've got it, you can see through it, it's transparent. We've got, what, four, four flecks of stretch and one layer of braid, coyote composite up here. You can see my hand through it. And then you can see where it's deflected down here, where it's doubled up over our connector. That's a really nice light layup. Yeah, that looks better. Now you can get your finger in there a little easier. I got my wheel on slow. That works out just fine for smoothing that up. Light blue, green, scotch bright wheel. Yeah, that nice slow wheel. It works really good on smoothing up that composite, especially that epoxy. That feels good. Just like putting a tire on a car. Get your first couple of lug nuts on there. Sort of a star pattern. Screw them down, don't make it tight. Well, it's got that plastic, the serlin on the inside of it, so you have a plastic edge. And running that wheel on slow with that sirloin seemed to work real well to smooth it up. 
and then just your outside, that little teeny bit, has the composite. That feels great. Any liner can handle that. Nice light layup. I'm not seeing any area on the edge of this. It bonded really nice. Compress it, see if we can get it to break. It's not coming loose. So that worked out well at scoring it, really roughing it up hard. That worked out real good. So what we'll do next is drill a hole straight through the bottom. We're going to go right through the bottom of our lock and then put a barb on it and seal the top of this socket and do a vacuum test to make sure that we have seal in that area and so it doesn't come out around our edge right here. In fact, where I roughed up the body of that, you can see where the epoxy really stuck well to the outside of the lock housing. That's what that little bit of off-white is right there, is resin. That bonded really good to it. All right, so we're going to use a vacuum barb. I'm going to go right through the bottom of the lock and out through the bottom of my connection plate and screw the vacuum barb in there. <coughs> so when we do our test, we'll have full vacuum straight out the bottom. And definitely you want to have your lever open or off so you don't chew up your tooth that hooks on your pin. Yeah, that'll work good. You can see I just punched that out. And the drill bit I'm using is made to go with my tap for this barb. Your hole certainly doesn't have to be that large to get vacuum. But for our vacuum barb that we've got, it'll work real well. Put some Coyote Quick on that, and then we'll crank it in. And that comes out nice and flush on the bottom of our lock, so we're not protruding up into the hole. That way our pin doesn't get pushed up when we go to engage. Most applications with the barb go through the side which we can do that test also, but I wanted to see what we'd get coming straight through the bottom of this. Typically, going through the bottom, you'd use a different scenario, an Ohio willow wood plate, either an Autobach or willow wood vacuum connector. It goes on the bottom of this. So we're all set up here for vacuum. Got our suspension sleeve over the top of our socket, hole straight through the bottom of the lock. Make sure our lock is shut completely. And let's go ahead and turn that vacuum on. There it goes. So our, our liner's actually baggy here and it's drawing all of the air around the entire thing. You can see it sucking down. And then you can see it draw clear in to the bottom of the lock. We'll shut her down, disconnect. This is a one-way valve, so it's not letting any air back back out of it. And what time do we have? At 9.13. And let's just leave this sit and see how long we can hold this pressure. What is it at, 25? 25 pounds. All right. So we're half an hour into this. We still have vacuum. It's drawn down a little bit, considering how we got this sleeve laid in here. It's suspension sleeve. I think that's fantastic. We've been holding vacuum for over a half an hour now. I think we got a winner.